Ask a question, get an answer. That's the simple premise of the Everyday Veopreneur Summer Series episodes. I'm inviting veopreneurs onto the show to ask their most pressing business and marketing question. And then I will provide an answer that I hope will help them and other voice actors listening who may have that same question. So this week, I'm welcoming onto the show Moose Werwada. Great to have you here. Hey, Mark. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. So tell me, what is your most pressing business and marketing question? So my question is social media, right? And I think I struggle with this on stuff like my newsletter and maybe my blog. But definitely social media. I feel like that's kind of my blind spot. Like on social media, Twitter, that Twitter's kind of my main one, right? LinkedIn. Okay. But it's like, what do you put on the social media? Like Twitter, you know, you want to you want to kind of promote yourself, boast your accomplishments. But at the same time, you don't want to be like, everybody look at me, every single post I put up, you know? Right. Yes. So some advice on social media posting for VO. What do you think? I think it, it is really important that we we try to find that balance. And I also think, for me anyway, I think that it's really important that we still let people see who we are. And I think that's another area where voice actors get really nervous, right? Like it should be all work or do I need to have a Twitter account that's for my personal and a Twitter account that's for my professional? And, and questions like that come up all the time. And I have one account across the board, one Instagram account for both, one Twitter account for both, one LinkedIn account for both, and and just try to find that balance of giving people a little bit of insight into me and, and who I am as a person and as a voice actor, but also making sure that it's clear that I am a voice actor and talking about that sort of stuff hmm. every once in a while. So I think that's one of the things that you have to take into consideration. I do think it's a balance, though, because you're right. You don't want just every post to be hey, look at me in this thing that I did, or hey, look at me in this award that I won, or hey, look at me in this award that I got nominated for, or hey, listen to my demos for the 27th time or whatever. So you do have to, to constantly be looking for ways that you can implement content strategy a little bit. I do think that part of it depends on the audience that you're trying to reach as well. Mm -hmm. And so are you using each one of your social media platforms to target the same group of people, or do you have different strategies for your different social media profiles? Hmm. Good question. You know, I don't do the Twitter. I have a separate Twitter account for just my VO stuff. Um, and then I have LinkedIn, like LinkedIn, I'll put a lot of links to like this new project I just finished or, okay. uh, you know, studio renovation or, yep. and, and sometimes I'll put in, Hey, Joe Gaudet did a great job on this thing, you know? Yep. Um, but the Twitter, honestly, I, I posted maybe f six weeks ago on that, you know? So I, I'm kind of aiming for, I want to be, I don't want to say marketing to other VO people, but I feel like if I can put some up that another VO actor can relate to, they might retweet it. Some of their followers, casting directors, commercial producers, whatever, might see it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, I think a big part of the strategy for you is going to be just determining who the audience is, right? So for example, on LinkedIn, I've primarily tried to use LinkedIn to connect with instructional designers, video producers, things of that nature. So I'm, I'm trying to make that my primary focus, looking at finding voiceover work on that platform and connecting with people who can potentially bring me voiceover work on that platform. But obviously, because I do coaching, I connect with a lot of voice actors as well. So I'm trying to walk that line. Some of the stuff that I, some of the content that I share maybe is a little bit more targeted towards voice actors. Some of it is a little bit more targeted towards that, that buyer audience, maybe something that I've learned about e-learning or a post that I think would be relevant to those instructional designers. And, and then obviously there's a percentage of it that is about my work, but even when I'm making it about my work, I'm trying to do it in a way that shows value or adds value to the person who's receiving it. So for an example, I wouldn't just go on LinkedIn and say, here's the latest, greatest project that I just did and, and leave it to the end, right? I might talk up that product a little bit. You know, it was a privilege to have the opportunity to work with such and such a company on this great video. And they, you know, them, they did a great job with their team at, at producing this animation or whatever. And so I'm coming at it more as being a fan. Yeah. Uh, and, and so promoting maybe the end product or, or the end service, but maybe also promoting the company did the, that I did the work for, but then ending that post with a clear call to action. By the way, if you need a voice for your next explainer video, send me a direct message to request a custom audition or quote. So I think that there's ways that you can incorporate that into it. I think across the board with social media, consistency is going to be a big part of it. 
you will get out of any of these platforms what you ultimately put in to any of these platforms. So if you show up on Twitter once every few weeks, there's probably not going to be a whole lot there for you. If you show up on LinkedIn once every few weeks, there's probably not going to be as much there for you. But if you decide that LinkedIn is going to be a platform that you really want to be a part of your strategy and you're making sure that every day you're showing up for even 10 or 15 minutes to read through some of your feed, leave a couple of meaningful comments, maybe send a couple of connection requests and maybe come up with some sort of a post or some sort of piece of content on your own. The more present that you are on the platform, the more that you're going to be seen, the more that you're seen, the more likely that you get in front of somebody who may ultimately need to hire you. Oh, question. Yep. Yep, me. Um, <laughs> how often do you think per, per, per account should you be posting? LinkedIn, Twitter, once a day, once every couple of days, does it matter? Which? I mean, there's a lot of mixed variations on this. I think on Twitter, they say like five, somewhere five a day at least is kind of the ideal, maybe a little bit more, but that could also be partly from engaging with other people as well. It's really just about being present for the sake of the algorithm. I think on LinkedIn, there's maybe a little bit more flexibility. I like to try to post maybe three times a week, but it depends because I may do like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday type strategy, for example. But if I post something on Monday and on Wednesday, I'm still getting traction out of that post. So I'm still getting new comments on yeah. that post. Then I don't want to share something new and squash what I've got working. You want to keep that so going. I want to keep that going as much as possible. So I like to try to extend out the life of my posts. One of the ways that you can do that is when you do share something that's working, make sure that as people are commenting, you are responding back to their comments. And so the yeah. algorithm just sees comments, it sees engagement, it's, and, and it will just keep building from there. But I do think at the very least, plotting out a strategy for one or two posts a week on LinkedIn. And then, you know, maybe if you don't use one, you can bump it to the next week or something like that. And then finding that balance. I mean, I, I, I talk all the time about adding value and people hear me say, you know, make sure your posts add value. And I'm like, what the heck does it mean to add value? I'm not a coach. I don't, I don't teach. I don't have tips to offer or whatever. Well, that may not specifically be it. Like, when I let my clients know that I'm going to be out of the office, that that adds value in a way because that's going to help them to not miss a deadline if they were expecting to use me for a project. If I talk about a studio upgrade, that adds value to my clients because it's proof that I'm continuing to invest in my equipment and 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 invest in, in the quality of the product that I'm able to offer them. If I share an article that I've read uh, that I think, you know, maybe I've read an article about video production and I think that may be relevant to the producers in my audience that adds value to them. Yeah. I share something that, you know, I, oh, I heard this on a podcast and it really spoke to me and I share a comment about that thing that I've learned. That's a form of adding value to, to potential recipients of that. Um, the ability to make somebody laugh or make somebody smile. That's a, a way that you can add value. And so I think that there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. But I do think that it's finding that balance, right? Not every post should be an ask and not every post should be a, I think anyway, not a, a, a hey, look at me. I want to be relatable, right? I mean, anytime that anything happens in the media related to Dr. Pepper, I'm going to get tagged a hundred times. Like, look, I'm literally sitting here wearing my Dr. Pepper shirt. Oh, are you right a now. Dr. Pepper freak? I'm a Dr. Pepper freak. And most people <laughs> know that and everybody will, you know, they, I'm associated with that now. Right. But they know that because they've seen me do that on social media. Same thing with barbecue. You know, I talk about barbecue and whatever meat I'm smoking on the weekend, you know, throwing a brisket on or whatever. Mm. People see stuff like that and they associate those things with me. So by giving people the ability to get to know me on a more personal level, I become more relatable to them as well. And so then that creates the opportunity for some back and forth relationship. Yeah, and sure. Engagement. Yeah, I mean, I've talked about before, one of my best e-learning clients, we connected initially over our mutual love of the Red Sox. That's what started the conversation. And, and so then we still get to have those conversations every once in a while. Not that there's been a lot to celebrate this year, but then we, you know, commiserate with each other together and over our mutual pain of our love of the Red Sox. But that would have never came up if I wasn't sharing some of that type of content in the first place. So okay. letting people see you, I think, is part of it. Interesting. Um, real quick, you mentioned you have one, <clears throat> excuse me, Twitter account for everything. Yep. I have two. I mean, well, one for the podcast I do, one for my personal and one for voiceover. Okay. Um, 
would I want to consolidate that or because in my personal, I'll do, I'll do some political takes, you know, and that's, I don't want to alienate anybody. I want that to be in a separate box. I think that is one of the instances where there's value. If you are someone who has strong opinions, whatever those strong opinions may be on, they could be on politics. They could be on religion. They could be on sports. They could be on social issues. They, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. If you're somebody who does have those strong opinions, then there may be a use case for splitting up your accounts because one of the things that we've learned over time, I mean, I've had it happen to me personally. There are clients that will vet you. There will cli- There are clients that before they hire you, they will look at your social media and they'll see what you say or see what you do. And, and that could be a deciding factor in whether mm-hmm. or not they ultimately decide to hire you. Because maybe if you're somebody who's controversial, somebody who's got a hot take, whatever, they don't want to bring that drama into their brand or their business or whatever. And so right. that would be a use case where you might want to keep those separate. But at the same time, recognizing that, you know, it's not too hard to connect the dots if you're using the same name or, or something yeah. like that or same picture or, or something like that, right? Somebody can figure it out. Outside of that, I mean, for me, how many social media accounts can you actually handle? Like, like I know. this is this is timely with, that we're recording this interview with the introduction of threads and I've signed up for threads and I've started playing around with it a little bit just to get a, a, a better sense of it. But I'm like, okay, so now I've got Twitter, I've got threads, I've got Facebook, I've got LinkedIn, I've got Instagram, I've got TikTok, I've got YouTube, and, and the list goes on and on and on. <sighs> How many thinking profiles can I possibly make? It's exhausting. And then if you've got a personal and a business, you got duplication in there. How much original content can you actually come up with? And so for me, part of it was just streamlining, right? Like I want to be able to post one time to one social network. I don't want to have to come up with 14 different posts for 14 different social networks based on personal, based on professional, based on whatever. I'm trying to streamline as much as possible. And so sure. that is definitely one of the reasons why I took the approach that I took. Yeah, I know you could have like 42 social media accounts all said and done. Yeah, there's there's a lot of them out there. And I mean, I think that's an important part of this as well. When you're in the process of trying to create content, it can feel really overwhelming. And one of the things that I would absolutely say is don't feel like you've got to be on every social network either, right? Because if you're not going to fully immerse yourself in it, if you're not going to dive in and use it properly, there's limited value for you there anyway. I would rather pick one or two social media profiles, use them consistently, be amazing at them, be on there every day, work really hard at building a network, nurturing that Net, that network. And I think, I believe that I can create enough opportunities from using those couple of profiles more efficiently that it doesn't matter if I miss out on some of those other platforms because I've got enough going on to keep me busy. So don't let FOMO be the thing that causes you to think you've got to sign up for all of these platforms and then get overwhelmed because you've got all of these platforms that you're trying to create original content for. All oh, hail the algorithm. <laughs> That's what it boils down to, right? It really does. At the end of the day, we are all at the mercy of every one of these algorithms on every one of these social media platforms. And and part of how you game those algorithms, so to speak, is just in how you use the platform. And so using them consistently is is a big part of it. So if you're not yeah. using a platform, just forget it. Move on. Focus on the ones that you really want to do and the, and the ones that you enjoy. Because those are the ones you're going to use more efficiently anyway, right? Like I signed up for TikTok. I played around with TikTok a little bit. I, I wanted to familiarize myself with the platform, posted some content. At the end of the day, I decided, I don't, I don't think this is for me. So that's fine. So I move on. I mean, I can yeah. post my stuff on YouTube or post my stuff on Instagram and I can get better reach, great engagement, like, and, and that's good enough for me. So I don't feel like I have to be everywhere all the time. And I think that's part of it too, is giving yourself that permission to I don't know, get over the FOMO and, and accept that we can just, you know, just do a couple and do them well. How's your, how's your OnlyFans account going? <laughs> I mean, maybe I should reserve the username there just in case. Right? <laughs> I don't want anybody doing anything on there under that username that might reflect poorly on my brand. <laughs> Dr. Pepper in the house. Yeah. All right, Moose. Well, I hope that answers your question. Gives you yeah. a little bit more insight into into how to do this. The, the big thing is, you know, don't overthink it too much and and be you. Let people see you. Let people get to know you. Okay. I appreciate it, Mark. You're the man, man.